The People's Assembly holds its first session in this ordinary course and Lahalaki asserts that protecting the security of the homeland remains a priority. Units of the Syrian army storm the hideouts of mercenary terrorists and kill a number of their leaders. The Saudi and Bahraini regimes continue to suppress popular protests that call for political reforms and the release of detainees. Good afternoon, welcome to a news bulletin. I'm Dania Nizam. The People's Assembly held its first session in the third ordinary course with the participation of all members of the government. The government made a presentation of the economic and service situation as well as steps for national dialogue. The Speaker of the Assembly, Mohammed Jihad al-Laham, asserted that the terrorism targeting Syria is supported from the outside in order to destroy the country, its infrastructure and oil products. The enemy infiltrated Syria at the instigation of foreign forces. This calls for fast work to block the way of such infiltration that targets our security. We are facing a big challenge to preserve Syria's unity and the dignity of human victims slaughtered in the name of religion. The speaker added that national dialogue remained the basic role of the political program to solve the crisis in Syria through contact with all citizens to block the terrorism targeting all our people. The Prime Minister, Dr. Wael Halaki, asserted that the government continues to carry out its programs and that this stage requires everyone to hold the honour of national responsibility. Despite the difficulties, the government continues its, its efforts to restore stability and safety to the whole of the country, whose security remains one of the first priorities that deserves every effort. The Prime Minister said the electri electricity sector was targeted by the armed terrorists. This reduced the supply of energy by more than 50 percent. Mr. Halaki asserted that the economic siege was imposed by the EU and the US, as well as some Arabs against Syria. This reduced the performance of the sector of health care because the terrorists attacked hospitals, dispensaries and health centers. He pointed out that the terrorists systematically targeted the development and service sectors in order to create a crisis and to show the government a failure. The Turkish government continues to violate international law through organizing and supporting terrorist crimes in Syria and plundering the wealth of the Syrian people and economic infrastructure. The Syrian Foreign Ministry addressed two identical letters to the Chairman of the UN Sec Security Council and the UN Secretary General. Mr. Faris Shabi, Chairman of the Aleppo Chamber of Commerce, called for registering and documenting Turkish aggressive acts against Syria. This call is based on international law ruling cases of conflict that followed the Second World War, starting with the Korean War and the Indo-Pakistani War, in addition to the disintegration of Yugoslavia. Mr. Shabi called for raising complaints against the Turkish thief, who sits on the chair of the Prime Minister in Turkey. The attacks of Turkey constitute a flagrant violation of the resolution of the UN General Assembly number 2625 of 1970. This resolution considers any intervention in the internal affairs of sovereign countries, creating cases of threat against world peace and security. The religious ideolo ideology of the thief Erdogan and his ilk lead to worse crimes like the crimes of Al-Qaeda, violating the UN Charter and the rules of the International Court of Justice. The UN Charter prohibits the organization or the financing of terrorists and destructive activities or military moves aimed against another country through violent acts. Such acts violate the ruling of the International Court of Justice in the case of Nicaragua in 1986. The court found the instigation and support of armed gangs in another country and intervention in its internal affairs. This is what Turkey is doing through its support of the armed opposition in Syria. The Turkish government continues to violate the, U the UN Security Council Resolution 1373 of 2001, which called upon states to take the necessary measures before accepting requests of refuge in order to ensure that the refugees would not commit acts of terrorism. 
Patriarch Johanna the Tenth Eliazaji led a mass in the Cathedral of Saint Nicholas in Beirut. He called for the construction of bridges of love in the Oriental countries and to pray for the restoration of stability, especially in Syria, the cradle of civilization. He prayed to God to lead Syria to peace and to a decent life. Continuing their efforts to prepare the suitable atmosphere to halt the conference of comprehensive national dialogue, the subsidiary committee is assigned to set up the necessary mechanisms to call upon the national opposition and various political powers, continue to hold meetings in various parts of the country. The subsidiary committee in Al-Raqqa held a consultative meeting with social civil activities and representatives of parties and popular and professional organizations. They discussed the form and content of this conference in order to implement the political program to solve the crisis. The participants asserted that such meetings were necessary to discuss ways and means of overcoming the crisis and exchanging ideas and proposals concerning common visions to launch this process. In Homs, the subsidiary committee held its first consultative session with political, social, religious and cultural parties and activities in order to exchange ideas and proposals to agree on common visions for the purpose of launching the process of national dialogue. In related news, in Tartus governorate, consultative meetings continue for the third day with the political and economic community events to reach a national charter agreed on by all parties and sides in order to overcome the current crisis in the country. In Sweda, the National Dialogue Subcommittee held meetings with the two parties of the Democratic Socialist Union, Unionist and Syria's the homeland as part of preparations to hold the comprehensive dialogue. Participants asserted that the National Dialogue is not restricted to be held between the government and the opposition. It should be held among all political and social parties in Syria. They emphasized that the dialogue is a priority to solve the crisis in the country. In Aleppo, the subsidiary committee of salvation headed by the governor, Mohammed Wahid al-Aqad, discussed the salvation activities in the governorate and the services offered by the government in collaboration with the Syrian Red Crescent. These services are provided to the people forced out of their homes by terrorists. The committee called for supplying basic materials and health care to these people as soon as possible. In the Idlib countryside, units of our armed forces stormed a number of terrorist groups in their hideouts, including weapon stores in Kufr Haya, killing and wounding many of them. Among the dead were Nidal Baqur and Omar Baqur. In the countryside of Jusr al-Shughur, our armed forces destroyed terrorist hideouts in Ain al-Suda and al-Shagir. In Saudi Arabia, protests are still calling for the release of the detainees and for political and social reforms. In related news, a woman and her child were injured by gunfire near a prison in the town of Al Awamiya in Al Qutayf, east of the country. Protests persisted in the eastern region of Saudi Arabia since last March, calling for political and social reforms, but Saudi authorities continue to use force to repel these protests, killing a number of protesters and injuring several others. 
In Bahrain, police used tear gas and sand bombs to disperse protesters walking in the funeral of Hussein al Jaziri, who was killed by security forces last Thursday. Police blocked some roads leading to Al Dia village west of Al Manama to prevent thousands of people from joining the marches which were held to mark the second anniversary of the protests calling for democracy and real reforms. The opposition of the 14th of February co coalition criticized the measures taken by the authorities, calling for an end to the ruling party's absolute seizure of power and to stop the policy of exclusion, oppression and marginalization of other parties. This is it for our news for today. For more information, you can visit our website, syriaonline.sy. After the break, Vani Konejian brings us Syria's latest economy. God bless you and God bless our beloved country. Good afternoon. Chaired by Prime Minister Dr. Wael al halaqi the Cabinet held a meeting to discuss the current situation of oil, the issues related to the gas sector and the measures to be taken to protect oil facilities against terrorist attacks. The Minister of Oil and Mineral Resources, Engineer Suleiman Al Abbas, presented a review about the current situation of oil and gas and the attacks launched by terrorist groups against oil ref refineries, which affected the productivity and made it difficult to meet the social and economic needs. The cabinet agreed on the Ministry of Oil's proposal to make contracts for protecting oil and gas facilities, crude oil, and oil transportation lines. The manager of the hydrocarbons in Damascus governorate stressed that providing the diesel is a must for the needs of the official and economic activities and the household consumption, showing that both of the distributing centers in al Qabun and Al-Midan areas are working 24-7. He also mentioned that the directorate is currently continuing the procedures of establishing a new distributing center in Dummar, noting that starting work there will start next month. Thus, the three centers will create an acceptable geographical spread in the governorate. They also may reduce transportation burdens. The finance ministers of the G20 in a statement at the conclusion of their meeting in Moscow emphasized the huge risks facing the international economy in addition to the weak growth and the rising of the unemployment rates. The statement showed that the weakness in the international economy was due to the ambiguity in economic policy, the low le levels of loans by the private sectors, the international economy's collision with high taxes and the weak loan establishments. The G20 finance ministers called in their statement for directing the efforts into strengthening the monetary and the economic union of the Euro-Asian zones and removing the uncertainty of the financial issues in both U.S. and Japan. For his part, the Russian finance minister said that all participants in the meeting agreed that there will be no talks about a competition among the currencies, rather it will be among the economies. In the meantime, the British, French and German governments launched a joint initiative to crack down on tax evasion carried out by some multinational companies, announcing that this will be addressed during the G20 meeting in July. The finance ministers of the three countries are to unveil a new plan at the G20 meeting in Moscow, following a report issued by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development that shows that many big companies move their operations from country to country to pay less taxes and that this needs to be prevented. The Russian energy minister stressed that the policy followed by Russia in selling gas is reasonable because establishing projects for transporting gas is going to be based on contracts. He also pointed out that Europe won't be able to meet its needs of gas from the spot market because its consumption may increase in the near term. He also showed that futures for the pipe gas is more available than the spot market because prices of the latter are fluctuating, unlike the pipe gas as its futures are likened to oil prices, linked to oil prices. Due to this, the prices can be forecast.
the Standard & Poor's 500 index fell, snapping three days of gains. Some companies performed badly and investors weighed economic data. The Asian stocks dropped with Japan's Topics Index halting its longest winning streak in 40 years after earnings reports from motor companies disappointed the investors. Gold prices dropped sharply to hover near a six-month low at the bullion market on persistent sell-off from stock lists that caused the investors to retreat in the international markets. And now over to the exchange rates according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. And with this, we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.